Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at that Hater Ranger 53 that I picked up the other week um, alongside the uh, the Honda. Uh, I went down to East Wittering to go and pick it up. This machine I serviced about two or three seasons ago and the gearbox wasn't working then. I did tell the, um, tell the fellow that the gearbox I think was gone and that sourcing a new part for that may be pricey and also very, very um, difficult to actually obtain. Uh, he didn't want me to investigate it any further because he just, just serviced it up and I will push it, um, which is fine. So I didn't e even get to investigate the reason why it wasn't working. But that, that was my sort of assumption. Um, all the cables are all pulling as I should do, but the drive isn't working. So it may be a really, really easy fix, but um, the, the bloke didn't even want me to invest in it because he wanted his mower just to run and cut the grass. That was it. However, he then come back to me about two seasons later and said that the mower is still here. If you want it, come and get it. And I don't think he's even used it since um, I serviced it. He had two or three mowers there anyway. Um, so we'll have a look at that. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or two more on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this Hater Ranger 53. Right, here's the Hater Ranger 53. It's on a, what year is this on? Uh, 2000 model, it ain't that old. Um, the first thing I wanted to check is just make sure that the, oh my lord, the blade um, belt is actually on, which it is. That's on in place there. And you should be able to see via the inspection plate at the back, it's actually on there as well. So now I want to engage the, um, the drive mechanism at the same time as looking at the back because I want to see if the actual um, the cable is actually working it could just be a stuck cable right so I'm just going to get a little tiny uh, pry bar put it over the back to hold the blade up I'll move the camera around so you guys can come and look see what I'm doing right so I'm actually around the back of the mower now and look inside the inspection plate. And what I want to do is a cable down here. You won't be able to see it, but I can. I just want to see if that's actually moving or not. And it is, that's actually operating that lever. I can see it is. So that's operating, but I can still pull this lawnmower backwards and it's not locking off. So that's a concern. I've not seen this style of um, gearbox before on these. I think that just comes off. So what I may do first off is I might actually um, that pulley working. That pulley's not doing a great deal. I think I might actually have to have, it, have this axle out to inspect it to see what's going on. It's not doing a great deal at all, full stop. But before I do anything, I'm going to remove his back wheels just to see if there's any gearing on his back wheels that are, are failed as well. So. Let me uh, remove his back wheels and uh, we'll go from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove his back axles, or back wheels. Just wanna see how this is, how this is powered, because they, they all differ. So we've got a gear cog, and these gears look pretty good on here. That's locking up. So that seems to be working okay. So now I want to remove the other side as well. Because you don't know who's been in here. See, someone could have put these um, little tiny, there's uh, two pins in here, maybe around the wrong way. I'll put that back into there. So I don't lose the bits. And then I'm just gonna turn the machine around and we'll uh, remove the wheels the other side as well. Now we're around the other side. Got a, got a flap on here, a cover on here to remove. A little flat-headed driver. Poke that in there, remove that off. <clears throat> Get my D wall. Remove that one. 
what I was expecting to see was all gears all sheared out. That's what I was expecting to see. And the gears in here are a little bit worn. They're more worn than the other side, but I wouldn't say that was a problem. That's turning the entire axle. So what I'm now going to do with those wheels off, I'm going to fire this machine up uh, with the wheels off. I'm going to spray some grease on these cogs. And I uh, just want to see if this, this will actually now just turn the cogs on their own without the wheels, uh, which is uh, fully doable. The blade is still higher than what it needs to be, so that's no biggie. Let me just fire this machine up very quickly. Right, I'm just going to fire this machine up. As I say, just want to literally just want to test see if these gears are actually going to run or not. A little bit of spray grease, just to help them out. Because they do it, they do appear to be working. There's nothing. There's no difference between. Um, me going to forward and reverse, so that's, that's my concern. That should lock up. You know, quick little look in there, that just uh, made me have a suspect look in here. Oh, that's just grass in there, okay. The belt's all on the tensioner where it should be. and that arm is fully engaging. I think the gearbox is gone. That's the truth of the matter. <clears throat> I think the gearbox is gone. But uh, let's just try and fire it up anyway. <clears throat> See what we get. Okay, so straight off the bat, that um, that blade, uh, that, that belt is not even moving that at all in its position. I heard a little tiny squeal. You hear it? So therefore, the belt is not actually running at all. We're almost running inside. Um, the belt's not turning around, which means the gearbox is not turning around. So it could just be a belt problem, right? Could be. As I say, the bloke didn't want me to invest in it and to spend any time in it. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to remove, um, remove this uh, blade and the boss. And we're going to look at this belt, see what this belt is actually doing. I'm going to try and free up all the other pulleys too. There's a reason why this belt is not spinning. And that's, I think, what we need to get to the bottom of. So give us two ticks, let me get the blade off. Very simply done with, with an air gun or with my blade stopper, and um, then we we'll go from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to have problems removing this friction plate, I know I am, they're renowned for it. Um, I'm just going to cut this, um, cut this belt off because it's absolutely mullered anyway, but I think one of the pulleys may be locked up, so quick snip on the old belt. That frees that off. And it could just be that the belt was so badly damaged that it wasn't spinning. So I'm going to go in the back now and look, have a look around the back to see um, if all these other pulleys are actually spinning or not. And if they're spinning, it may just be just put a new belt on and we may get around it. But uh, I'll meet you around the back in two ticks um, once I reposition the camera. Okay, what I'm going to do is I've got to remove this shroud. Uh, one, two, three screws there, two here couple on the back and this, this whole plastic mechanism and flap should all come off in one go. Let me get that done and that will then give me access to these pulleys. I've got a feeling the pulleys are locked up, um, the tension pulleys are locked up on the back. I think that's what the problem is. Um, but we, we should see. Um, 
but the gearbox still isn't still isn't turning um, anything on the uh, on the drive. So it could be a catastrophic events have led to this machine doing what it's doing because it's not actually I think I can feel there's a slip in the gearbox just there it slips so it may be catastrophic um, but I need to just double to get these other pulleys running first and then I think what I'm going to do I'm going to pull the gearbox out of this machine and uh, put another one in but we should see Give us two ticks, let me remove this cover and I'll come back to you very shortly. Right, so I've just removed um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Phillips screws at the back. And then there's three up here to do. They're pretty much every screw's got to come out. It's as simple as that. I, you know, it's not, I didn't want to just want to come to the next part of the video and you guys say, well, I miss out all that. Well, how do you do that? But uh, all this sort of got to come off because this is all, this is all joined, I believe. I may be wrong. I may, have to do, I may be sucking eggs in a minute. Oh, and I may have to just, and I'll come out. I may have to just remove this one, this one, this one, which may give me um, entrance to the actual flap itself. Let's just try it first. I always want to cut the screws back in. That's no, no biggie. I just want to get to the idler pulleys. They're, they're all locked up. But as I say, that gearbox is making a slipping, a slipping feeling out of it. So let me remove that one. Let me remove that one. Let's see if that lifts. It is locked in there. And let me get a flat headed driver. Oh, I've got a little tiny bolt here to remove as well down the side. Let's take that one out. Very quickly. If it'll come out. Underside panel. That ain't coming out. It is now, I think. There it comes. Now will that lift up. There's no more screws in there. Will that lift. It's coming out. Okay, so that'll take what backs up off, so ignore what I said last time. So there's all the idler pulleys, as you can see just there. And these are seized, they're seized, seized solid. So I'm gonna spray some grease into them. And now if I engage the drive, you can see that's come all the way back. And that drive is actually at, at full extension. But even when I turn the gear, it's doing nothing at all. It's just free spinning. I think some has some gone here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray some grease on these pulleys to try and get them to operate better. Yeah, that's all working as it should do. It should be, um, yeah, that's all working fine. But the actual pulleys are not running. So let me get some grease onto them. I might even disconnect, disconnect this gear here. Take that off of there. Give me a bit more slack, Mick. That's it. Take that off. And I might even just remove that. And that way I can get it up on the bench and free it up. And then the problem then starts with having, oh, who put that on there, he-man? Uh, flat headed. Watch your snap. That's it, that's coming. I think it's coming, I don't want to snap one of the other. free by that or get new bearings for it or a new arm but the problem is the gearbox is still not doing what it should be doing now, I don't know if a standard gearbox will fit in here as of yet we can get this all there I push it can't probably see much because my arm's in the way but I've got to try and get this get this off Come on, baby. 
maybe. Hallelujah. So a washer goes on underneath, and we've got this set up here. And as you can see, these pulleys, well rusted, and they ain't doing nothing. Locked up. So I'm gonna put some grease into them, so we can't get them to turn a bit, a bit more freely. If not, be new bearings for these. That'd be no biggie. I've uh, got a little tiny collar there, it goes upwards, okay? So that, that, that should free spin. So that's the first problem. Let me get that done and I'll come back. Right, so, um, pulleys. Uh, now spinning, now working as exactly as they should do. I've uh, just a bit of WD 40, a bit of grease, and they're all now working. So that, I'm happy with those. Um, however, with the gauge now in drive, let me just put this to one side, I don't get no more dirt in here. I'll, I'll give them a decent clean, decent grease up yet, but they're fine. Uh, the drive is now engaged, okay, and it's all on full extension everywhere you look. Uh, but now, if I turn this either way, you should get some movement out of those, out of this axle here, and we're getting nothing at all. That tells me this gearbox is now toast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this gearbox out, take the gears off, and uh, see if I've got a spare axle to fit it or something similar, and then uh, we'll go from there. So um, take the circle clip out, remove the gears, both sides is the first step. Right, so what I'm doing now, I've taken the gear cogs off and all the gearing is complete everywhere it should be. Um, it's no problem. I'm taking it all out of this machine because once I take the other cogs off the other side, this machine will then be tipped over onto its tummy and uh, I can then have a look at this axle properly um, and extract the axle out of here because I believe the axle is gone. Uh, there's just nothing on there at all, doing anything at all. And uh, when I turn this, I can feel a slip. So if I can get into the gearbox, I'll show you. But um, what I'm hoping is, is that a standard mount field gearbox or something like that will actually fit this machine. That's the idea. I've got an old hater um, in the store, which has got a rusted deck on it um, with a Honda engine on there, and that's got a good drive. So I'm hoping the drive gearbox out of that one should fit this one. That's the plan. We'll see. I'll bring it back in two ticks. Okay, so the next part is I've got four bolts, one, two, three, four to remove. I don't want to use an impactor initially because these do have a tendency to shear off because they're, they're going to aluminium, okay? But it seems to be running relatively well. And then to get that last one out, you just want to adjust your height control, which would be over here. Tip that up, and that gives you access to the other two. There's one there, that's going to be a, a pain. So just forward and backwards it. If it snaps, you'll be looking to drill it. So just go easy. Don't get it too hot, is the key. I think it's coming. If you just, if you just put, put an impact on that, um, it would uh, it would just snap off. That one's coming off. So you've got one bolt there to do. one here there's quite a few here. let me uh, put the chain over the impact now because uh it will now take an impact if i can find my impact done so that's the four bolts for the um for the axle, don't go losing them, put them in the magnet tray. You don't lose no bits and pieces. This um, axle now should, by rights, lift up. All that's holding it is the cable um, in position. I don't think there's a spring on this one. Sometimes you get a spring. I've got a bolt down here, right down the center here, down there's, by the gearbox is an arm, and there's a little tiny bolt down in there which needs to come out. Again, that'll be into the alley cast, so you need to go a bit careful with it. Just down in here. Oh my word, that's gonna snap, I know it is. Yep, snapped. 
I thought it would do. It's not a problem, I can just drill straight through that and then put a bolt the other side of it. Uh, but that's what happens if you give them too much physic. I wasn't giving the Harlan, I knew it was going to snap anyway. I knew it was. Um, not a problem, I can just drill a, drill a bolt through there and put a nut and bolt on the end of that. That's no biggie um, at all. So the gearbox is now loose that end. So now, by rights, we should get a pry bar. And start to, I believe, have this gearbox out. It goes one. Two. That's it. Gearbox is now coming out, but as I say, you're a bit wary of that drive cable. Um, that's been held on. So what you need to do now is come around this side here, disconnect your drive. And there's a little tiny arm just here that's holding this cable on, a little tiny spring. Can't really see it because there's a lot of dirt in there. You need to get me a compressor. But now you need to undo your um, your cable, <clears throat> otherwise, you're going to struggle to get this out because your cable's all connected. So um, the cable can be reached by the other side by disconnecting it, and then uh, that gearbox should then come out. So let me disconnect the cable and I'll come back to you. Right, so the next thing I've got to do, um, I've got to remove this height adjustment rod, um, and you've got to take the tension off of that, put off of that spring, okay? Because uh, you'll never, you'll never really get it off without having about, about it pinching yourself. So, grab some a bit of pull cord and a flat-headed driver, and just ease the spring up and put the pull cord um, inside there, like that. Okay, and then uh, take a couple of turns on a on a screwdriver, lock it off so it don't go nowhere, and you should be able to pull that out in one go <clears throat> that will then release the uh, the spring and then that will give you a bit more slack <clears throat> to remove the actual arm off of this device it's got to come off to release the axle the axle pretty much just floating there <clears throat> so that's got to come out well, i might better move it out now with the axle coming out all in one go because the axle is just, it's just sat in there and I think it's just dirt in there that's holding all this up. And give it a tiny tapping hammer. Yeah, a lot of dirt in there, which is what's causing this to. There it goes. Now there's the axle now out. Now the question I have is, do I have an axle to fit that? That's the question. Um, let's have a little look. Right, so um, gearbox now fully taken apart. Just want to separate this gearbox up. It's done by one, two, three, four, five nuts and bolts. Uh, holds the gearbox apart uh, together, sorry. And now what I'm going to try and do is just going to separate this gearbox up because I'm interested to see um, if I was actually right in my initial diagnosis um, if this gearbox is actually knackered or not uh, I, I'm suspecting it to be to be knackered I'm gonna um, pretty much bet the money the gears are stripped out let me get a pry bar in there I think all the bolts are out, yeah they are. Let's get a pry bar up in there, just to help take it apart. I've got a gasket glue in here. This is all sticking all together. Let me get it separated and I'll come back to you. Okay, I took the gearbox apart, and as you can see, um, I was correct in uh, in my uh, in my findings, and that is, uh, I've got lots of gold in here, lots of gold fragments. Um, the main gear is stripped, completely naked, pretty much. A little bit on the top. Um, all this has all been melted up, and what have you. So I've got, you know, it's catastrophic failure. Um, the main gear, which is always always a, the big one, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But when you spin this, um, although, although that was moving to a degree, let me put the bolts back. 
I had to mute like the pulley to get them bolts out. They were an absolute pig. Um, but that, that was obviously spinning, but I was feeling um, some kind of slipping, and uh, that's what it was there. As you can see, um, lots of uh, gold gold fragments in there. That bearing's still good, uh, but yeah, lots of lots of pieces that uh, isn't very good. So I'm now on the hunt for a, uh, a gearbox for this, uh, but it is um, slightly different. It is a um, 19 inches across, I believe. Let me get my... Uh, my ruler. I think it's 19 inches across this one, which is slightly different. Uh, let's have a little look here. Measure this up. Goes about there somewhere. Bit hard to do it when I'm trying to hug the camera at the same time. Uh, 19 and a half inches, 18 and a half inches from start to bottom. Yeah, not quite, not quite. Um, 19 inches it's about 18 and a half so i need to find a part for that but uh, i was right in my conclusion initially uh, the gearbox was shot there you go okay so this is part one of the hater um saga unfortunately i have looked online and the gearbox for one of these brand spanking new is uh 128 pound okay i can't find any online at all at the moment um, that would warrant me to buy them. I've looked at other ones and they appear to be slightly different size axle lengths and the gearbox on the bottom, this part here, uh, finishes here and it needs to be extended. So, um, do you know what? For what it costs, nothing at all. It is a free mower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the axle back, uh, which is there, and I'm going to take all the gearing off the axle and I'm going to convert it to a push mower. Yes, there'll be a reduction in price but, um, before I go to sell it, but it's still a hater um, and it will push relatively well to 21 inch. It'll push relatively well, but it just doesn't warrant me um, buying a brand new gearbox for this machine. So part two would be converting to a push mower, um, which hopefully you'll enjoy. And then uh, we can get it out and sold uh, this year. It won't make massive money because it is a push, but um, against what it costs for a brand new gearbox, the machine just outweighs the cost. It's not worth doing. If this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two more on the Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.